This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so uh, we'll be starting our next topic uh, that is advanced bill of material functions. Okay, so the topics that we are going to cover there, we will see phantom assembly, what is phantom assembly and why it is used. Okay, its importance. Co-products, what are co-products and what are byproducts? Okay, how they are used in the bill of materials, you will see. Then discontinuation control. What is this discontinuation control? Then we will see simple discontinuation and parallel discontinuation. We will cover this. Then alternative components, how to use the functionality of alternative component, how it works. Then we will see multiple bombs, how to create multiple bombs variant bombs what are the difference between multiple bombs and variant bombs we will cover then mass changes how to do mass changes in the system for the bombs and product structure those so these are the topics we will be covering in the advanced bill of material functions okay first we'll start with the phantom assembly what is phantom assembly a phantom assembly a phantom assembly is a logical grouping of materials okay a phantom assembly is usually created within engineering to describe a number of components easily and manage them as a whole so sometimes what happens is even though the the particular assembly it it it, it is it won't exist physically but it is used to group some materials okay so for that they will use phantom assembly phantom assemblies are used to enable the simple structuring of bombs the items typically do not physically exist exist so these phantom assembly items the phantom assembly it, it doesn't exist physically actually but it is just to use it to group some materials components okay during the bomb explosion in in an production order the bombs for the phantom item assemblies are also exploded so the phantom assembly components are exploded during the production order or during mrp the components of the phantom assemblies become normal reservations while the phantom assembly itself is transferred to the order as an unplanned effective reserve so basically system what it does is it will explore the components of that phantom assembly but for that particular phantom assembly it will not create any reservation or it not create any requirement okay so if you see this you will understand suppose let's say you have a material you have a product let's say a okay it is manufactured with b c and let's say r and s okay so these four components these four components but due to some reasons you want to club you want to group this r and s so this two you put it into a phantom assembly phantom assembly okay so this phantom assembly bomb will contain these two materials so when you run mrp uh, which we will be discussing when you run mrp or a production order what happens is when you do the planning system will create dependent requirements for this one this one and this one and this one but not for the phantom item. but this one it will not create the any dependent requirement but it will explore the bomb of this phantom assembly and it will create the requirements for the down level it's bomb components so that is called phantom assembly okay so to do to define a material as a phantom assembly First, in the in the metal master, in the special procurement, there will be a field called special procurement in the MRP two view. MRP two view. I will show you this in the system. In that, you have to define that as a fifty phantom assembly. Okay, and also in the bomb components, in the bill of material components, in the item data. For that, again, you will have a special procurement. You will have to define this as a fifty phantom assembly. Phantoms. So you have to make the settings in two places. So now we will see this in the system how it works. So let us go to the system. Okay. 
So I'll, I have created the data already in the system. So okay. So if you see here, I have created a product like Phantom Assembly demo. So if you take this product, if you go to the bottom of this product, I'll go to this CS03. This is a product plant and bomb usage one. Okay, so if you see here, this is the main product. It is having three components one, two, three. Out of these three, the first one is again having bomb, bill of material. Bill of material. You see, it's assembly. But this is defined as a phantom assembly. So if you go to this metal master of this material, I'll, I'll take it to, I'll go to the metal master. Okay, if I go to MRP2 view, you need to go to MRP2 view, plant is 2001. Here you see, it's special procurement, it is already defined as phantom assembly. If I click on the list, you see here, 50, phantom assembly. It is, it is already marked as phantom assembly. I did it already in the metal master. So this one setting you need to do. And another setting is in the bomb item details. In the bomb item details, if you select this, if you go to item details, if you scroll down, here you see. It is again in the special procurement, it is decided as, it is defined as 50, phantom assembly. Phantom assembly. It is defined as phantom assembly. So basically you need to make the settings at two places. One is one is in the MRP2 view. MRP2 view, another one is in the bomb item details. Bomb item details. So both the places you need to mark it as 50. And I'm assembly. Okay. So it, the settings are already in place. So now let me let me go back. Okay, let me take this material. Okay, so now let me go to its MD04. This is our, I'll go to the main material. This is our main material, phantom assembly. So what I will do, I'll just enter some requirement. Okay, 10 it is there. Does it have production version? Let me check the production version. Okay, it is having production version. Okay, so what I will do, I'll just enter some requirement for this product. Okay. So let me enter the requirement. Let me open one more session. We will discuss this entering the planned independent requirements in a subsequent topic called demand management. Okay, just let me enter some requirement here 100. Okay. I am just entering the quantity as 100. Okay. So now I'll enter the, I'll, I'll refresh the stock requirement list screen. You got the requirement. So that means we need to produce this quantity 100. We, we have to produce this product 100 quantity. So to produce this 100 quantity, you need all these materials. This you need 100, this you need 100, this you need 100. Okay. So now when I run MRP, when I run MRP, it will create dependent requirement for this one, this one. So this one, you go here. It will create dependent requirement for this one, this one, but not for the phantom item. This one. But it will explode the bomb of this. Okay, let me go to the bomb of the phantom assembly. Okay, phantom assembly. Let me take a screenshot of this. Let me take a screenshot of this. I'll take a screenshot. Okay, let me go back. So now I'll run MRP. Observe carefully. I'll run MRP. MRP is a separate topic. When we go to MRP, we will discuss in detail. I'll just run MRP. Planning. I'm just doing the planning activity. I've entered the header material. Header material here. Okay. Scheduling one and planning mode one. Okay. So running MRP. 